out at a local lake that I have never fished before. It's about 30 minutes from my school. And uh, it looks good. It doesn't have the best reputation, but it's a calm fall day. I'm gonna try some traditional fall tactics. Go with my plan B if that doesn't work. And just kind of go from there. It's one of those days where I'm just drawn out of a hat. <laughs> I have no idea what they're gonna be biting on. This place is notorious for dinks too. I hope you guys saw that on camera. Oh, <laughs> not that like big, but for this lake, are you kidding me? Especially this is my first fish. But dude, this guy choked it. That's at least three and a half pounds. I'm gonna get an official weight on my connect scale. All right, gonna get a weight on this guy real quick and get him back in the water. There's a ton of grass around here, so I thought maybe the swim jig would be kind of a decent idea. He really looks pretty rough. Not even gonna touch his gills. On that connect scale, registering at 3.59. Oh my God, look at that fish, dude. All right, back in the water she goes. Nice, three pound Ohio largemouth. It is November. The grass is still here, the water's cold, but they're still hitting moving baits. Look at that fish. There he goes. Whew, that was awesome. The deal with that fish right there is uh, he was sitting right on the weed edge. I, I kept casting that weed edge and I wasn't really hitting the, the main target. Then I used my uh, my metanium and I switched to accuracy mode so I can get right up on the weed edge. So I could cast literally right on there. I wanted to like barely touch it. And as soon as I did that, I was rolling through there and I started popping out of weeds. And sometimes like people get mad at that like when they're getting in the weeds. But the truth is, is when you're doing that, when you're making motions and, and ripping that bait out of the weeds, it gets the fish's attention. Because you're not only moving that bait, but you're moving the weeds around it and the vibrations of a fish is sitting in those weeds and you feel something moving on top of them, he kind of kind of key in on that. You know, it's it's like a double plus. The uh, swim jig that I'm using is a Lanier jig swim jig. My buddy uh, Chris Moody makes these really awesome. Pretty much one of the only swim jigs I use. They're fantastic swim jigs. I haven't been swim jigging a whole lot, but I uh, decided to give it a try today. And look at that head though. Look how slender that head is. That's so important when you're getting through the grass like this, and it's a good swim jig, honestly. I'm, I'm ready to, to smoke another giant because that's a really good sign. They're probably tucked into these weed beds right here right before it gets too cold. Really, really good sign. <laughs> it's awesome. There's one. Little guy. Wow, look how dark this fish is. I don't think I've ever seen a largemouth that dark before. These fish are all messed up. Look at that dude's dorsal. He's got bl black blotches on him too. These fish look super stressed for some reason. I can't believe how dark that fish looks like it came straight out of the bayou. <laughs> look at that dude. Back in the water he goes. Lure I caught that little dude on was my famous and trusty $1 popper that I did a video on earlier. And I'm um, using my Shimano Titanium DC, 7.11 gear ratio. There's one. That's a good one. Oh, that's not that big, but it's decent. Man, he crushed it. He crushed a lot harder than that one before. He chopped that one. Out here on this little flat, smoking, <laughs> smoking some dinks on the, on the popper. I just saw these guys coming from a really nice bass boat, probably they probably dropped, you know, thirty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on on their B boat, and I asked them to catch anything. Nah, I didn't catch anything. You know, sure enough, 
I'm here on the bank, fishing on a budget. Got four fish or three fish so far. That one's a little bit better too, but still so dark. This one looks healthy, which I really appreciate. All right, back in the water she goes. So all these fish are super aggressive this time of year and they'll hit baits like a top water popper or a fast moving swim jig. You still have to understand that the fall bite is a lot different than the summer bite. So the one way that I like to work this to kind of match that fall bite is I like to work it kind of slow. I, I like to hesitate this popper, meaning when I'm walking it, I won't finish my walk. I'll kind of stop and, and kind of let it just sit there for about two or three seconds. Sometimes letting that bait kind of do its own thing and, and slow down a little bit just drives them nuts and it's a really great way to get them. And you don't have to burn this thing across the top water to get a bite. You can barely work it, you can just kind of barely twitch it. I'm trying to make as little action as possible. They can see it. The water is super calm, it's pretty clear. They don't have to have this bait going full force at them. They can see it just kind of twitching. And it doesn't look natural because bait fish this time of year start to slow down, they become vulnerable, and fish like largemouth bass and smallmouth bass will destroy shad that are on top of the water. But shad that uh, shad that's injured isn't gonna <laughs> go 100 miles per hour. It's gonna kind of move like a, like a lame little bait fish. So you have to match that with your action, your popper. Just a little, little knowledge there. <laughs> I've, I've not been having the best luck at my local lake. First time fishing Snowden, must say I'm very impressed with this lake, given that it gets hit so hard. There's one. <laughs> I wasn't even moving my popper. Giving you some knowledge and I'm getting blown up on the, on the popper. That's pretty decent fish. Maybe the biggest one on the popper yet, maybe? I don't know. It's like the springtime, these, these little males that get stacked up in one little shallow flat and they do kind of the similar the same thing in the fall. The only difference is, is right now they're doing it for like feeding purposes because they gotta get, they gotta get chubby. You gotta get a little bit fatter, dude. You knew better than to hit my popper. Wow, nice fish. I think my short-lived popper bite has expired. This wind is starting to pick up and uh, I don't think they're able to key this out as, as well they, as they were a couple minutes ago. All right, I think it's safe to say the bite is completely shut off. The winds come out, the clouds broke just enough to kind of let that sunlight in, which is really lame because I was relying on that overcast to keep that top water bite going. Nonetheless, I am super satisfied. I broke a three pound barrier today with one of my fish. I caught a decent amount of numbers. You know, this is a huge jump considering I have not been getting any bites lately. It's been crazy hard for some reason. So the, what the, <laughs> the rig that I caught my big fish on was this setup right here. The reel and rod are brand new. I just got these yesterday. The rod is a seven foot medium heavy cousins tackle casting rod. It's got a fast action tip, so it's perfect for applications like square bills, spinner baits, and swim jigs. Uh, I like graphite sometimes when I'm fishing reaction baits. I don't always like fishing glass rods, and uh, this is a solid, solid rod for that application. The reel is a Shimano Metanium MGDC. This is a 6.21 gear ratio, a little slower than my the uh, the one that I've had for quite some time. Although I have a, a kind of a problem when I was casting with it just in this new spot over here, the um, the uh, nut, the ring nut or the bolt nut, like disappeared. I don't know where it went. So when I, as I was reeling, I was like, it feels kind of loose. I was like, whatever. So I took a cast, and the whole thing like flew off because there's a spring inside there that kind of compresses up against the star drag and the spring was loaded and there was nothing to keep the spring from holding back so it boom it flew off but thank you so much for watching today's video hope you guys enjoyed i'm really excited i got some fish towards your guys' way because these past videos lately have been uh in a result of the fact that i haven't been catching too many fish if you guys have any questions shoot me an email and the email address in my description below or shoot me a comment i always love reading your guys' comments i may not always respond but i love reading them thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of Fish in the Midwest.